Jones. We've been talking about the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it's time for us, and I'm going to use this as an introduction, it's time for us as Christians and believers on our job and around us to begin to reach out and to minister Christ to people. Now, in some situations, in some societies, in some circumstances, they will not allow you to share. This is, some people call it religion. This is not religion. Christianity is not a religion. It's a way of life. Amen. Buddhism is religion. You know, but Christianity, Jesus Christ, amen. He is our Savior and He's our Lord. Amen. And so we have to find a way to begin to reach people. And you don't have to always, oh, for the Lord would say unto thee, oh, my brother, you could take all of this, let's extract all of the actress. Extract it. And you can minister to people in a refined and a sophisticated way by just using the right words. You don't have to holler all the time. You'd be surprised and say, hey, hey, man, you're going to have a great day. And that person may be down. This is going to be a great week for you. You know, I don't know what you're going through, but God is going to bring you out. Now, there were times I would actually bring some of the uh, co-workers into the office, and I would give them prophetic words. And um, there are times when, in passing, and I would ask them, I said, can I say, share something with you? And they said, yeah. So we went to the side, and I shared with one of the young ladies about promotion, and then I saw her getting married, and then I saw some things, and, uh, and it was like, that person was actually just blown away. And one of the things they asked me was, how do you know these things? I said, by the Spirit of God. My neighbor, um, the couple, I saw them. I was in prayer, and I saw, and I saw them having a little girl. And I saw the little girl. She had blue eyes and just, you know, she looked like, looked like a father and everything. And so... Um, um, as I went to the mailbox, I saw them passing. I said, hey, hey, you guys, how you all doing? Hey, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, I said, hey, I have something I want to share with you. I said, okay. Um, I said, uh, uh, I saw your wife. Y'all going to have a girl. Y'all going to have a, a child. He said, wow. And he looked so over to his wife. He said, wow, that's encouraging. He said, um, let me tell you why. He said, because she just miscarried. They just had a miscarriage about three weeks prior. And this was the third miscarriage. And so it was devastating to them. But when I gave her that word, it wasn't long after that she got pregnant. And you see the little girl, you're like in the neighborhood, you know, she's like two, but she's just all over the place with that blonde hair and these blue eyes. A beautiful little girl. And so they bought her a little bicycle. Now, not the one, the kind you paddle. Have you seen these little bicycles? They didn't have them when we was around. What you do is just walk with them. So the other kids are riding around, and she's just walking and stuff like that. And I'll say, hey, little girl. And she'll just stand and look at me. I say, hey, beautiful. And so when you give someone the word of the Lord, it's like you're breathing life into them. That's where the word inspiration comes from. It literally means to breathe into somebody, to resuscitate somebody. And I'm going to tell you something. All of us need encouraging sometime or another. Amen. And pray that God will make you the type of person that you, you are encouraging. You encourage people. Because that is one of the gifts uh, that the Holy Spirit does give us. Amen. And so to be an encourager. Because all around us, there's criticism everywhere. But to receive a refreshing word from the Lord. A refreshing word. And let me tell you this. 
and I'll go follow. When God speaks things, I don't like giving no uh, uh, bad prophecy. I don't like to give those warnings, the harshness. I don't, I don't like that. Maybe some people may get, uh, you know, a, a thrill out of it. I, I don't like it because what happens is this. When whatever, whatever, whatever God is speaking, whatever he's speaking, when he's giving you a, a powerful word for some, someone, that the flow of the Holy Spirit, it flows through you. And you feel the magnitude of whatever it is, whether it be a promotion or, or someone getting a breakthrough. You can feel that breakthrough in you. But to give someone a harsh word, the heaviness rests on you. So when the prophets, when they would go into countries and nations, and they would prophesy the word of the Lord, and if God was angry, that's the way the prophet would deliver the word. And the people will be shaken. But the same nation that uh, Jonah avoided, Nineveh, the Ninevites, he did not want to go to those folk because they were the enemies of Israel. They were the enemies of Israel. They would come and take their possessions and take, take their wives and take their daughters and make slaves out of them and take their sons and make slaves and build their nation. He hated them. But God called him. He said, the people that you hate, I'm sending you to. He did everything he possibly could do to avoid it and to, 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 to escape it. Are you listening to me? Everything. And boy, when that whale spit him out, guess where he was headed? Right to none of them. And when he got there, when he got there, he told God, he said, they're not going to repent. And guess what happened? When one of their enemies showed up and warned them of God's judgment, the entire nation say, you know, this got to be God. For him to jeopardize his life, to come into our country and to tell us what God is saying. And guess what the king did? The king heard the word, he received the word, and he put the entire nation on a the fast. They stopped feeding the cattle. They stopped feeding all of the animals, all of the livestock. The mothers stopped giving suck to the babies and let the babies cry. Let their cry ascend unto God. And the babies, they cried and they cried day after day after day after day. Can you imagine a child crying and hungry? They wouldn't even feed the child. God, if you don't move. And that fast moved and they repented of that sin. That fast moved the heart of God. And God's judgment was moved, removed from the nation. But Jonah, he was angry. And he stood right outside the city after he prophesied and just watched. And God let what a plant that's called a gourd, uh, I think it's like a gourd, a gourd, or whatever that thing is. It grew over him, had very large leaves, and to give him some shade. Because God said, you're going to be here a long time. He said, you're going to need some shade. And so judgment did not come upon them to about almost, uh, uh, I believe, it's been a long time since I read so probably about maybe 28 years later. And the reason why it came, it, judgment was postponed. The reason why it came is because they went back into idolatry, into idol worship. So I, I'm just flowing with this. Can I just flow with this here? So we as believers and we as uh, uh, as the people of God, what we have to do, that's what I tell you, it's so important that you stay on your knees before God, confessing your sins, amen, judging yourself, not other folk, not other folk, I'm talking about you, amen, the Bible says judge, judge yourself so you will not be judged, so when you get down on your knees before the Lord and you judge yourself, Father, I've done this. So you are exonerating yourself so that the judgment of God will not come upon you or your household. Because some, let me tell you something. When judgment comes upon a nation, it just don't come for a day. It's a, it can be there for a season. It can be there for 20 years. It can be there 30 years. It can be there for an entire century. You don't want judgment. 
to come. So you do everything you need to do so judgment won't come upon you. It comes on individuals. It comes upon churches. It comes upon government. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You pray before God. You humble yourself. You do it. You say, Father, I humble myself. You don't want God to humble you. You don't want God to take his hand and press you down. Call, at, call up Mr. Pharaoh. Mr. Pharaoh, what did God do to humble you? He will never, Pharaoh will never recognize God. He never would recognize God. He never would. And Joseph, when he gave him, when Joseph gave him that dream and told him what he saw, he saw the birds eating in his head. Meaning that he was going to go crazy. His mind, he was going to lose his mind. Are you listening to me? And his mind left him. He left the king palace one day. He was struck like, like he was a lunatic. He was there in the king palace with his garments on. And all of a sudden, boom. He was a lunatic. He ran out of the palace, dwelled in the wilderness, naked. Naked. You know when it, you know when it changed? You know when his conversion came about? When he came to his sisters and he looked up and recognized God and gave him glory. And instantly, his mind was restored. And he went back to the palace. I'm talking to somebody today. And he went back to the palace and we restored. Somebody asked me, when does restoration start? After you, after you repented of your sins. I said, the moment that you repent and ask God and you turn, that moment restoration starts. I wish I had my game here with me. Uh, I don't know. I, Pastor, let's say, I, Pastor, you got your game here. I don't know something. Else. Just looking at me. Don't none of us. I don't care. Let me tell you this here. And this is your mouth. I don't care how high you get and how you go. As long as you are in this flesh, you're not perfect. Not in this body. But you can have a good heart. That is one of your greatest commodities, having a good heart, having a heart for God, having a heart to do what is right, even though you come short. Uh, well, let me give you this here. I got about, I have a few minutes. So, so what I want to talk to you about just for a few seconds, I just want to share that with you. I know that's another sermon. All right. Go to Acts 8 chapter right quickly. I'm going to start, at, if you allow me, I'm going to start at the um, name verse. And but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used uh, so sorcery. Sorcery is witchcraft. Sorcery is witchcraft, is divination. And bewitched the people of Samaria. He bewitched the people, giving out that himself was some great one. In other words, he had the people believing that he was a god. But he used witchcraft. He used witchcraft to, um, to deceive the people. Okay? And... Um, uh, he was delusional, and the people were delusional too. And he had the people think that he's something like, like he was a god, and to whom they all gave heed. And so they honored and reverenced him from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is a great, is, listen to, is the great power of God. The great, the Bible said, he said that this man is the great power of God. In other words, he's the Holy Spirit. What a bold prediction. And to him they regarded because of the, of the long time that he had bewitched them. 
with sorcery. Ask your neighbor, are you under spell? So he had these people under a spell. The Bible said for a long time. But, but when they believed Philip, one of the apostles preaching, the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Now, when they heard the gospel, the curse was broken. When they heard these anointed apostles, the curse was broken. And then it says, verse 13, then Simon himself believed also. Now, now the sorcerer, the one that was actually working this divination, then he believed. And he was baptized. And he continued with Philip. He continued with the, with the apostles. And he wandered, beholding. Listen to it. He went with them, following them. He saw the miracles that they were working. He saw the miracles and the signs and the wonder, wonders that they were doing. He was amazed because he knew that the miracles that they were doing, they were doing them by the power of God, and they were superior in power and manifestation than what he had been doing. See, the, the, see, the powers of darkness cannot, cannot compare to the powers of God. And so, let's go down a little further here. And now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they, they sent unto Peter and John, and who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Now, and this is where I'm trying to get right here. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Ghost. The gift of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know today that the Holy Spirit is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. So we see here that there were believers who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and they had been baptized, but they had not been filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. That experience is separate from the, spirit, the, the, uh, the experience of salvation. You have to understand this. Now, in some de denominations, they just stop. Once you get baptized, and that's it, you stop. You, you, you're there, and then they say you have the fullness. You don't have the fullness. When you're baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost, you're being given dunamis power. Amen. And you have this divine authority. You have boldness. Amen. You're not just an average Christian. Are you listening to me? You become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Now you're walking in this supernatural power where you can cast out demons. Cast out devils. Walk on demons and devils. Are you listening to me? Amen. You have this authority over them. Are you listening to me? These demons know when you have the power of God. Amen. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? That's what the demon asked the man. He tried to cast out the devil. That demon jumped on him. Because he didn't have no spiritual power. Oh, I'm going to preach this here. So the Holy Spirit, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is a gift. He's a gift. And you find out here that what they did when they went there, verse 17, and then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. They received the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm going to bring this out and I want you to get it. Laying on of hands in the scripture, when you receive the laying on of hands, it's for three reasons. Number one is for impartation. You see impartation. We see them receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Receiving the baptism. Listen to me. A person cannot, if a person's heart is has a blockage in their heart, they're afraid, whoever is praying for them, they don't trust them or whatever, it will block them from receiving the, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? It will block them from receiving the infilling of the Holy Spirit. If there are any signs of fear or symptoms of fear or doubt that is there, that person will not be able to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In some situations, in some instances, we've seen people that could not receive because there was something that was fighting against the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I shared this with you before, um, uh, and I, I mentioned it again, and I think she won't mind me saying it, but this time I'm not going to call her name. 
but so we had a person they they're one of our ministers they were having they was kind of struggling with receiving the baptism of the holy spirit and i said god what is this what is this because everybody else was receiving like that i said what is this and god said the music uh-huh i said the music god said the music tell her the music it's the music the music that she was listening to was fighting that spirit all music is a spirit it was fighting against the holy spirit of god to blocking to block the infilling of the holy spirit in other words it was literally fighting over territory And so many Christians and so many believers, they feel like, you know, you're a Christian, you're a believer. You can just listen to anything. They feel like that. You, your, your spirit won't be contaminated or affected. Yes, it will. You can't just listen to any and everything. Because all music is a spirit. You have to understand it. And how, how is it do you cast out these type of spirits? These spirits enter in through the ear. Amen. The lyrics become spirit amen the lyrics the words become spirit and and they impart it into your spirit right and then what happens once they get into your spirit they manifest through your actions so when you if a lot of times when your kids are listening to rap music it may be to, to you it's home to my i didn't want a job then we want to do nothing want to just sit up on the tree and watch the folk fussing Did that rhyme? <laughs> and then, now they just want to sit on the couch and do nothing. It's a spirit. It's a spirit. And you got to understand, Satan, listen, listen, he's an angel of darkness. You understand? He used to be an angel. He used to be an archangel. And, and he lost the majority of his power when he was kicked out of heaven. But some of it he was able to re retain. It was a residue of it. So what he can do, he can transform himself and present himself to you as something innocent. Until he call himself around your soul. You know, you have people that they, are, they drink sociably. They say, oh, they'll argue with you. Oh, it's nothing wrong with drinking. It's nothing wrong with having a Bloody Mary and a, a St. John or whatever they drink. <laughs> Do they have a St. John? I don't know. I don't. Okay. And they argue with them. And the reason why they are arguing and debating with you, the Bible talks about the flesh and the spirit. They war. They war. You praying that you praying that your spirit man, amen, amen, will lead and guide. You understand? Amen. Be in that place of sovereign, be sovereign, amen. With with you know the, the kingdom being established, you want to be led by the spirit of God, right? And so the flesh is like, we don't want to pray. Don't let him in here. Shoo. I ain't going to no fast. Shoo. You, you done bought that ham. You bought that picnic ham. Eat that ham. Shoo. They choose the Popeyes. And it fights. And it resists the spirit of God. You have to know these things. I'm telling you. And you can know when the flesh, boy, that old dirty flesh, that flesh, I'm telling you something. See, this is what connects us to, this, this, to the earth. That thing gravitates towards sin. Like a magnet. Without thinking. Ooh, we having a party. When is it going to start? <laughs> the party hadn't even started. You already dancing. It ain't till the 23rd. 
And we have to understand these things. But what happens is this. What happens is this. When the Spirit speak, when the Spirit speaks of God and righteousness, boy, the flesh get mad. The flesh get offended. It get angry. It gets angry. And one of the things is that the flesh know is that once that person is endowed and invaded by the power of the Holy Spirit, and once that once that glory explode in their body, every organ, every cell, every molecule, your DNA is going to experience it. And them demons are going to be cast out of you. And one of the things you're going to experience uh, instantly is freedom. That's why you hear people say, I feel light. I feel light. I came in heavy, but I'm light now. We ought to start weighing people before and after. You came in at 210, but you're leaving out at 150. Oh, glory. Lay aside every weight and sin which easily beset us and run this race with patience. They used to ask me, why you don't drink? I said, I don't have, I don't have a need to. What you mean you don't have? Why you don't, you don't you ain't never smoke no weed? I don't have a need to. <laughs> the Holy Ghost keeping me high. He keeps me high. Hallelujah. She ain't never been drunk. Yeah, I've been drunk. But I've been drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. I was conscious. Hallelujah. He makes me aware of God and circumstances and situation. Hallelujah. He doesn't subdue Hallelujah. my mental capability where I drive over a cliff. Hallelujah. I thank God for the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say, what is like? Have you ever been thirsty in the hot sun and somebody gave you a cool glass of water? Hallelujah. That quench your thirst. Hallelujah. Have you ever been in darkness? But then you experience light. It's a big difference. Hallelujah. Hey, have you ever been down and then the Lord pick you up? You know what it's like when I wake up in the morning I feel somebody walking in me somebody is living in my body somebody is occupying my body that's when the Holy Ghost he comes in and he lives in you You gonna help me preach back there? Oh yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. He lives in you. So sometimes you see people. See, when I used to be at church on Sunday, you see, I'm I'm up here now. But I used to be running through the church. I was rolling in the church. Some people didn't like it. But that was none of their peace. Hallelujah. I was fasting and praying. I surrendered my life to God. I told him, do what you want to do. Ah, glory. I don't care what the people going to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I, there are times I went to places 
It looked like nothing was moving. Hallelujah. We went to a Pentecostal church. Somebody asked me to go. I was sitting like this with my leg crunch. And the preacher was preaching. The choir was singing. But it was dead in there. And the power of God hit me. And I stood up. I saw it running. I don't want to stab nobody. I didn't want to stab nobody. And I did it again. Oh, glory. Sat down. Took my seat. It hit me again. And the next time, the whole church went up in the play. All the men started dancing. And when they got through dancing, all the women start praising God. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We have the Holy Ghost. You have power. I'm trying to calm down. Mm. Um. In. Mm. Oh! Hallelujah. When you talk about Jesus, the Holy Ghost jump on the inside. Hallelujah. When you talk about the Father, He jumps on the inside. He give witness on the inside. So they lay hands on Him. So when they lay hands on Him, when they lay hands on Him, some of them body just went quicker. And then some of them it was such overwhelming power. They were slain in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me give you this. So laying hands on. They would lay hands upon them for the impartation. The impartation. Second. Ordination. Hey. You read. Over the next verse, next chapter, you read, you can go back. And when they were fasting and praying, and God had spoke to them concerning. Um, concerning Barnabas and concerning them. He told them to ordain them, lay hands upon them, and to release them and release them for ministry. So it was for ordination, for the impartation. And what happened is this. When the apostles laid hands upon you, not only did they stir up the gifts that God had already put in you, but they imparted gifts in you. Are you listening to me? They imparted gifts of healing, and miracles, and signs and wonders. Are you listening to me? They imparted gifts unto them. And then one of the third things were, one of the third things was, uh, they lay hands on, they laid hands on the sick. And they would lay, they lay hands there were times when they lay hands on the sick. And then they cast devils out of people. And then first Timothy 5 and 22 through the 24 verse. Paul told Timothy. Paul told Timothy to do not lay hands quickly on any man. Okay. Not to lay hands quickly on any man. And basically what he was saying there, that means to ordain someone. He said, if you ordain someone by laying hands upon them, and they are not godly. They are not god godly, and they're not they have not been called. He said, You're gonna be a partaker of their sins. That's what he was saying. So it's a danger. And ordaining people that you, God, have not confirmed. Are you listening to me? It's a danger in that. 
And so, and so laying, laying on of hands is very powerful. It's very powerful. And these things were given to the church for our benefit. And some folks say, well, I don't understand that. They're laying on a hand thing. Well, let me bring some clarity to it. Have your battery ever died? Have your car ever stopped on you? Anybody? It doesn't matter what kind of car you have. All cars stop. Sooner or later, even the Bentley stop eventually. So what happens is this here. So you take, your, you take the positive and put it on the positive, take the negative and put it on the negative, and then you do the same thing to the other car, right? Right? Then you crank it, right? Well, it should have been cranked already, right? I'm not much of a mechanic, right? It should have already been cranked, right? It would be horrible if both, car, both batteries are dead. <laughs> so the stronger battery sends energy and electricity to the weaker battery. That's impartation. That's impartation. So, so the battery that was dead is now alive. I wish I could preach. Chris, one day I'm going to be able to preach. Watch. So it's alive. And so what happens, the Bible says that the letter kill it. There's, you, there are those who they, they preach the word, preach the word, the word, word, word. But if you're just preaching the word all the time, the word, the word, word, eventually the word kills people. They become worded out. Like worn out. But listen, but the spirit gives life. You understand what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit, it gives life uh, to everything. It gives animation. If you look at cartoons and stuff like that, our cartoons in the past, they were like plain and simple. Boy, this animation now is just amazing. And so it gives it life. It makes it vibrant. It gives it vitality. And that's what happens. The Holy Spirit gives you that vitality. In other words, Jesus came that you may have life and, and have it more abundantly. But how can you experience the abundant life when you're dead? And so when the Holy Spirit, when, you, when the Holy Spirit comes in, every vacancy in your life is filled. Every empty place... You know how you used to feel horrible? You, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you have substance now. You know who you are. Amen. Because God is dwelling. God, the Holy Spirit, is dwelling on the inside of you. So whatever was ailing you, hey, now you've been, you've been filled with God's precious Holy Spirit. He casts, he's forced all the money forces out. He destroys all bondage. He give you guidance. I mean, he tutors you. I mean, he works with you. He leads you. He guides you. He strengthens you. He gives you everything you need to succeed and to excel in life. The Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit does. And it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what force, your stature, education, your background. All of us need God's spirit. All of us need God's spirit. And so what is it like? <clears throat> a lot of people, I know some a lot, a lot of y'all. How many of y'all use uh, uh, regular unleaded uh, gas in your car? Regular. Raise your hand. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. But there are cars. The luxury cars, the lu lu luxury, luxury, luxury vehicles, you cannot put that gas in there because it'll run sluggish, right? You can only put premium in there, amen. And when you put that premium in there, phew, that baby can go. I mean, that force, she can like, phew, I mean, she can move. And that's what happens with the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit, it goes from, see, see, you go from walking to flying. It's a big difference. It's a big difference. Don't ever think that you don't need the Holy Spirit of God. Sometimes the manifestation is different. 
with some people. You know? But you got to trust God enough to let him do whatever he want to do in you. And this is why the people, like you had Simon in the Bible. He was into sorcery and all that kind of stuff. This is why a lot of the people that operate in that dimension, they fight against people in spiritual churches that's anointed. Because when they pray, so when we pray, it affects the heavenlies, the atmosphere, the community. And if they are in the community, and believe me, since we've been here, they have shut down. I'm telling you. Since we've been here, they have shut down a lot of them in this area and region. Because some, some, some other pastors told me before we came here, it was always killings and violence down the road. They said, always something. A lot of that has ceased. Just because we are in this community, because we're praying, there's an altar of God that is in this community where the power of God is moving. I'm telling you, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you're walking in obedience to God, God guarantees your success. Can you, can you handle that? Can you handle that? And you know that you're going to make it. The Bible says, the person that didn't do it to the end shall be what? Saved. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. For tithing and giving, please visit our website at HoustonDeliveranceCenter.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And hit the bell for instant notifications for a new and refreshing word each week.